Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a cloud advocate working at Microsoft. And today I'm going to talk to you about a new Windows 10 feature called Windows Sandbox. So stay tuned. Okay, here we are on my Windows 10 machine. And in some cases, sometimes you have a file or installer or a PDF file you want to try out. Um, but you're not sure if it's malware or it messes with your machine. Uh, and so what you did in the past, you basically opened up Hyper-V or another virtualization software and you created a new virtual machine running, for example, Windows 10. So you can do that now with that quick create. You can download uh, that Windows virtual machine and this would be a full-sized Windows 10 virtual machine. Um, so it also has a huge footprint and then obviously it would take a while until to download that VHDX file. And then it will take a moment to install that VM and a couple of minutes um, later, depending on how fast your internet connection or your, or your computer is, the environment would be ready. Now for just testing a file um, or a configuration, just for a quick moment, this is probably takes too long, right? So what we can also do is with this new feature, um, called Windows Sandbox. Uh, we can um, really quickly spin up a environment, a sandbox environment. Now, here's my blog post and I will put the link into the description below uh, where I describe a little bit what Windows Sandbox is and how it works. And you can see it uses the already installed operating system. Right, so it uses some of the files which the operating system uh, is there. So it has already a very, very small uh, footprint. So it's only a couple of hundred megabytes in size um, and it's saved up on that machine um, and it leverages the existing operating system, um, but still puts it in an isolated environment. Now you can see there are some prerequisites. Uh, we need to run uh, Windows 10 1903 or later um, to use that. We need to have a 64-bit CPU uh, and basically we, we need to have a system which supports virtualization because in the back end we are using Hyper-V technology uh, to run that uh, Windows Sandbox container. And to install, uh, we simply go, uh, let's go back here, uh, we go to the Windows features. and we scroll all the way down. And here you can see we have the Windows Sandbox feature. I already enabled that on my machine. If you haven't, you just enable it. Uh, it probably will take a reboot if you haven't installed Hyper-V before. So you might need to restart your computer. And now to start Windows Sandbox, you can simply go in and type Windows Sandbox, press enter. And then this will bring up your Windows 10 sandbox environment. Uh, it still will take a while to start that whole container up um, because it's an isolated environment. It will be completely separated from your existing operating system. So now we, the container or the Windows sandbox is up and running and you can see it looks like a normal, usual Windows 10. Uh, I can also go into full screen mode, for example, if I want to. And now I could work in that Windows Sandbox the way I want it. I can also go up, open Explorer. And if I go, for example, to my download folder here, you can see there's nothing uh, in there because it's a completely separated uh, environment. Now, if I go back to my usual, my first scenario, so I have a PDF here, for example, uh, which I want to open, but I'm not sure if it's malware. So I can just go and copy that. And then I go into my Windows Sandbox and click Paste. And this will now copy this PDF file into my Sandbox environment. And I can easily open up here and can have a look what happens to my machine or if there is, uh, if everything is okay. And obviously I can then go through, through that document if I want to. If I'm done with my Windows Sandbox, I just click on this and I will get the message that if I close the Windows Sandbox, everything which I have done in it uh, will be permanently deleted. So yes, that's fine. 
And so the next time I open up Windows Sandbox, you will see that it will take a while, um, but it, you will see that this, this uh, PDF I just copied won't be there anymore. It's a completely fresh sandbox environment um, where I have my files there uh, and my environment. So here you can see I'm back um, in my sandbox and you can see the PDF file is gone and have a complete fresh installation. Now let's close this sandbox again. And something else I want to show you is the possibility to basically customize um, this Windows sandbox experience using configuration files. So you have a different you have four different options right now to customize it. You can enable or disable the virtual GPU support. You can restrict the network access to the v, uh, to the sandbox or from the sandbox. So, for example, if you don't want the sand you want don't want the sandbox to go to the internet or connect to the internet, um, you can do that. But you can also share folders read uh, with read access, read only access, or even read and write access. So, for example, if you're doing some uh, development that you want to use all the time like files you have on your local machine you can for example give it read access so you can easily use the virtual uh, the files within the sandbox and you can also run a startup script which then basically goes out and um, allows you to do some installation or advanced startups and to do that we have a very simple way of doing that this is basically just some XML files and I'm going to show you that in Visual Studio Code so this is a sample um, XML file, if you will, uh, for the Windows Sandbox. Um, a configuration file here, which has different settings. So you can see here, I have the GPU support and uh, network support. And by default, this means enabled, but you can also say, okay, I wanna disable those uh, features. And then for example, I can map folders. So in this case, I mapped my download folder uh, into the host as read-only. And I also do run, for example, a um, command. In this case, I just very simply op run Explorer and open up uh, that da map download folder. So that download folder here will be mapped inside the sandbox as the um, Windows Sandbox user account here. Um, and it will be mounted on the desktop and then here you can see that this will be my download folder. So if I go to that, I quickly jump in here to my code repos, Windows Sandbox, and here I have saved my configuration files. So you can see here, this is my sandbox with the mapped download folder. You can already see that it's um, linked to the sandbox application. So if I double click it, it will add, open up the sandbox application. So let me close those windows. You can see that now the sandbox is going to start. And here now we have the sandbox uh, and you can see here now I have that download folder. And this now is linked here to my uh, local download folder as read only. So for example, if I want to go here and create a new file, it says I don't have the permission to do that. Um, but I can now copy those files or open those files, which I've stored in my host machine and open up that in my sandbox because they're read only. So this is pretty great. If you have some advanced scenarios, you can also map multiple folders. It's not just one. And again, you can say if it should be read-only or um, uh, if it should be uh, read and write permissions. So again, if I close it, everything will be gone again. I have a couple of other files and one I want to show you is, for example, um, the ability to install um, some scripts uh, or applications. So what I did here, I added a script which is, will be run when um, the Windbox, Windows Sandbox starts. And so if I go here and have a quick look at that script, you can see what it does. It downloads the Windows 
the, the latest stable version of Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then what it does, it runs and installs uh, Visual Studio Code as silent. So whenever now I start this sandbox, so let me go back here. If I start now this sandbox, this will go out and download the Visual Studio Code um, install installer, and then it will install it. So now you can see the sandbox is started and you will see that here now this uh, script starts. Also download the Visual Studio Code um, installer and then it will start the installer and start installing that file. It will take a couple of seconds um, to finish. And now you can see it automatically installed Visual Studio Code um, inside my Windows Sandbox. So I am I can immediately start working with Visual Studio Code. And this obviously works with like a lot of other applications uh, and can use them. What I can also do instead of, for example, download that application. So if I switch back here to Visual Studio Code, I can also go and say, okay, um, I want to map a folder. And in my case, in that folder, I have saved the installer for the Microsoft Edge inside the preview setup. So I run the command to install that as soon as the sandbox starts from that read-only folder. So the, I don't always need to download the specific XC file. So overall, I think the Windows sandbox gives you a great experience if you want to quickly try out and you want to do some uh, malware configuration hunting or if you want to check um, different files and want to try out things but you don't want to mess with your real um, with your real host machine. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave some comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hopefully see you next week.